Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Evidence for multiple clones in myeloma has been apparent for a long time um, based on clinical observations where patients may get responses in one part of their body but not others, suggesting genetically different areas of disease. There's also evidence that when others have published uh, whereby with disease progression a phenomenon called light chain escape occurs where the disease no longer appears to be making power protein but is clearly progressing suggesting that the disease dominant at that time point is different from what was present earlier. So these have been clues as to what's been going on. More recently there have been chromosomal studies which have suggested different tumour cell populations which can arise and then be treated to enable other clones to arise later in the disease course. But now with the advent of next generation sequencing strategies, it's become evident that the context uh, at a molecular level is highly complex and patients may harbour multiple different subclones of disease which may be selected for with different therapeutic interventions. There is now evidence using more sensitive molecular techniques which suggests again that there are multiple clones which have got activation of these critical pathways driving the progression of the disease. So this leads to a great deal of consternation therapeutically uh, because it's probably going to be impossible to institute a particular therapy which covers all of the abnormalities in one particular patient. The understanding of epigenetic changes in myeloma really is relatively shallow. Um, there have been a lot more genomic analyses done and surprisingly what's evident is that the transition from MGUS to myeloma isn't actually characterised by a great deal of genomic changes. It was always suspected that there'd be massive changes at that time point. But evidence is emerging in fact that the most dominant changes appear to be in chromosomal copy numbers, so more chromosomes of particular types, but also very dramatic changes in methylation, which is one of the epigenetic features of cancer. And in fact, with the development of myeloma from MGUS, there's a very pronounced degree of hypomethylation, which was again surprising. And then with disease progression, there is hypermethylation of certain genes. Therapeutically, that would provide an opportunity with hypomethylating agents which are available. When it comes to acetylation, our understanding is even poorer. We know that there's dysregulation of histone deacetylases and high expression of some which confers a poor prognosis. We also know that there are mutations of epigenetic modifying enzymes, but again, the distribution of these is uh, not consistent and they're quite uncommon. So whether there's going to be a therapeutic uh, imperative provided by these abnormalities, it's very difficult to say. At the present time, the epigenetic modifications are not only relevant in myeloma, but other in other tumor solids and in other hematological diseases. Within the epigenetic, the acetylase are key element of this epigenetic modification, especially in myeloma, because the acetylase are necessary for the survival of myeloma cells. The acetylase are involved in the removal of acetyl groups of specific proteins uh, that they are going responsible of the tumor proliferation, of the inhibition of the apoptosis, the angiogenesis, the tumor escape. So if the acetylase are overexpressed in patients with a myeloma and we try to block this activity, through the introduction of the ATS inhibitors, it is logical to think that we are going at least to try to control the proliferation of the disease, to try to induce apoptosis, 
to try to affect an antiagiogenic effect, and at the end, the disease can respond. However, I would like also to add that the epigenetic modification is important, but it's not the only mechanism involved in the pathogenesis of the disease. In the pathogenesis of myeloma, plasma cell myeloma are important, key genetic events occurring within the plasma cell, but also it's important to consider the interaction that plasma cell have with the bone marrow microenvironment, with the bone marrow stroma cells. So, multiple pathways are involved in the pathogenesis of the disease, and this finally results into a different therapeutic approach according to the different pathways involved probably in each patient, and finally the optimal way to treat patients would be the individualized therapy according to the individual pathogenesis in each patient. As uh, the pathogenesis of multiple myeloma is uh, a complex mechanism in which uh, many pathways are involved, you can understand that it's very difficult to plan a targeted therapy because with the targeted therapy we are going to affect or we are going to direct, direct our treatment through a specific pathway, but uh, probably myeloma cells can escape through other different pathways. So, Probably it is much more appropriate to plan combinations of therapy for the treatment of multiple myeloma patients in which different combinations are going to be able to attack different pathways involved in the pathogenesis of the disease.